Well, welcome back to the Global UAV. Uh, turns into be uh, some sort of podcast that we've been putting together frequently. And once again, I have Mike Burns, CEO, uh, with me. Good morning, Mike. How are you today? Morning, Trevor. Great. Thank Good. you. So we just wanted to follow up. Uh, we had some news out yesterday uh, on the uh, High Eye Aerial Imaging Division of Global UAV. Uh, There's some good news, uh, good news for High Eye and good news for uh, Global UAV. But we brought on a, a really reputable uh, uh, expert in the uh, drone GIS and geomatics uh, area, Jean-Francois. Can you tell me what kind of led to uh, your connection with him and bringing him on board? So one of the one of the, the the biggest assets that we have at Global is the people that's work that are working for us and with us, um, and and that's where a lot of the value in this company is held throughout all the divisions, uh, from corporately all the way through to our subsidiaries. And uh, Jean Francois was a was a key addition to this. He brings with him over twenty years of experience in the industry. Uh, he's extremely well respected. He has a lot of industry contacts, uh, and he's also a GIS professional. Um, these are our strategic steps that we're taking in high eye towards moving that company um, away from the uh, sort of the low barrier to entry and easy to access um, market of photogrammetry and, and drone surveying to professional um, professional services. Uh, to industries that are hard to access, and and Jean Francois is is one of the best people in Canada, uh, in the country to to be able to help move that company uh, to where we see it going, and and already we're seeing uh, fantastic growth in Hai Hai, um, with new contracts, international work, uh, and and lidar uh, uh, lidar survey contracts, so it's it's really coming along, and we're very pleased with the progress. In the same news release yesterday, uh, we announced that there was a UAV survey contract in the Caribbean island of St. Lu- uh, Lucia. Uh, just curious, is, uh, is, is there more international exposure uh, for high eye in the future? There is, yeah. We're getting uh, uh, work out of the U.S. Uh, and Canada, and obviously international overseas contracts um, and and potential work uh, that, that's quite far spread. So the unique part about the, the company is that, and, and it's the same thing with both of our services companies, because of the level of the market that we're dealing with, we're, we're very competitive internationally. Um, there's, you know, there's very few places where we can't compete because of the professional services that we're doing. So if you look at a lot of other smaller uh, UAV services company, they're restricted geographically to operating, you know, near to where they uh, to where they're based. But mm-hmm. we have an excellent network of, of clients, and we have the ability. Uh, a lot of it was gained through the experience of Pioneer Aerial, operating internationally for a few years now. Um, uh, so that that work is is uh, is very lucrative for us, and and we continue to get lots of interest in that field. So you did mention Pioneer. I'm just curious, how do you see um, differentiating both Pioneer Exploration and High Eye Aerial being both survey businesses within that the survey division? How do how do we separate and differentiate those two businesses for global UAV? Yeah, that's a good question. So <clears throat> High Eye is a is a uh, remote sensing company. They do lidar, thermal, uh, photogrammetry, multispectral. Um, uh, inspections, videography, uh, all of that that side of of uh, of the uh, the UAV services uh, business and Pioneer Aerial is solely focused on geophysics surveying in the mining exploration industry, uh, as well as some others like infrastructure detection and, and UXO. So <clears throat> those are are the two key differentiators. Um, High Eye is able to take on a, a fairly large scope of, of work. Sometimes we have overlapping clients. There's often times when a, a mining company will request a, a geophysics survey, and they also want LIDAR flown over their project. So we work uh, together on those, and we can be more competitive than our, our uh, um, than other companies out there uh, currently. And just to piggyback, uh, you know, weeks ago we mentioned the letter of intent for the purchase and acquisition of AIR. 
can you uh, share with our shareholders kind of where you know where we're at with that acquisition? Yeah, so we're in the process of negotiating the definitive agreement. Uh, it's going very well. We're 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 also starting to work together as companies already. Uh, clearly, there is some cooperation on the the contract that we recently announced, the large one in Quebec, uh, which is progressing well. And that came through um, through the connection of of uh, between the two companies. So. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to closing the acquisition and uh, very excited to bring on um, the management from AIR uh, into Pioneer Aerial. And it's, it's going to be a, a very strong addition to that company. Um, you know, part of the value of that transaction and that acquisition is, is that AIR has a completely different client base and access uh, and, and client network than Pioneer Aerial does. So, they're very busy. Uh, they have machines operating right now, and they're flying surveys. So when when the amalgamation happens uh, and they're brought into the global group, we'll we'll see a uh, a large increase in our network and our revenue from that deal. Very good. Uh, one question we get uh, from other divi- from another division in global UAV is on UAV regulatory. Um, do we continue to see some uh, client base growing with that platform? We do. Yeah, UAV regulatory is kind of unique in, in that uh, you know there, there's a couple of providers out there that that offer assistance and help, but UAV, UAV regulatory is uh, is a very streamlined process uh, to to help. Consumers and and commercial operators obtain SFOCs. Uh, however, the other side is that um, they're also uh, very involved in working within the global group. Obviously, uh, on the BVLOS um, uh, process, so that's not a uh, uh, extremely well defined route um, yet in Canada. Uh, so. Uh, UAV regulatory is, is is growing. They're getting new new customers and new clients, and as the regulatory framework in Canada changes, um, that type of business is going to become more and more relevant uh, mm-hmm. because we're looking at operators having to apply for compliant operator status and and uh, and other um, other regulatory hurdles that are making it a bit more complex mm-hmm. in order to obtain the. Uh, the regulatory framework to to fly, so that's where the company comes in. Very good. And I might also add, there's been conversation with regulatory on helping other companies looking to expand their fleet to help their uh, employees get in compliance, so that expansion can actually happen. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. So there there's uh, a lot of synergy between all of the brands. Um, for instance, if if a if a company purchases one of our UAVs from Nova Aerial, we can help that company get set up to fly uh, legally and and provide them with all of the uh, all of the regulatory framework and licenses and documentation they need to do that. Mm. Um, so it, it it's really beneficial uh, for currently operating companies as well as uh, you know new customers that are coming our way. Right? And finally, a couple questions that keep coming in um, from shareholders is really on the consultant fees versus the employee uh, um, uh, costs um, or salaries, excuse me, the employee salaries. Uh, Can you kind of break down uh, how Global UAV as a company is set up uh, between utilizing consultants and also bringing on full-time employees? Yeah, absolutely. So we don't have a lot of full-time employees. Um, a lot of our our services divisions uh, use use contractors. Um, however, they're the fairly loyal group of people. We have an excellent field team, um, and structurally, it just works a little bit better that way. Uh, the the uh, consultants versus uh, employees compensation. A lot of that is is uh, probably share based compensation as well. Um, on options and, and things like that. So uh, the the financial um, uh, responsibility of, of you know us as management for global and and uh, all the subsidiaries is is key. Uh, we know we're in a growth stage. There's going to be 
uh, a lot of capital that's required to to move things along. However, we're really uh, cautious in where we spend it and and to get the most value out of each dollar. So the investments that we've made to date back into the subsidiaries and back into uh, you know consultants and and to, to grow the companies has really paid dividends. So we're happy with our choices uh, and it's it's bringing a lot of value. Uh, to the brand and helping it helping it accelerate its growth. Very good, very good. Oh, is there anything else you wanted to add, Mike? Before we let you go? No, I, I think that that covered a lot. So I'm looking forward to uh, to the next time. And uh, thanks for thanks for your time, Trevor. Thanks a lot, Mike, for your time. Uh, and again, if anybody out there listening would like to contact uh, Global UAV, please be sure to drop us an email at ir at globaluavtech.com. You can also find us online on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. We appreciate your time and look forward to uh, uh, sharing some more content with you in the future. If you do have any specific questions that you would like management to discuss in these audio recordings, feel free to drop those questions in to Investor Relations email. That's ir at globaluavtech.com. Until then, thanks again.